The Nile floods would mobilize the entire population of Egypt under the pharaohs. It was a constant source of worry. Further south, towards the modern city of Aswan, there was an obstacle on the river, the first cataract. This collection of rocks would disappear and reappear depending on the water level. Elephantine Island is one of the biggest islands in the first cataract. To get there, Sameh boards a traditional Nile river boat. We are on board a felucca. A felucca is a traditional Egyptian sailing boat. The Nile has been Egypt's main through fare since the time of the ancient Egyptians. Sailing was the most comfortable and fastest way to travel. The prevailing wind in Egypt is a northerly wind, which blows the boats against the current. The Nile's current goes from south to north in the opposite direction to the wind, which is what makes it possible to sail in both directions. Elephantine Island was essential for military operations in ancient Egypt. From here, they could watch over the Nile, prevent invasions from the south by boat, and control the ivory trade after which the island is named. The island isn't just located in an important strategic position. It is also the first point of reference for monitoring the floods. The measuring system the pharaohs used remained in place until the 20th century and can be found all along the river as far north as the delta. We are in a nilometer on Elephantine Island. This nilometer was used until relatively recently to measure flood levels. These are the graduations from the 19th century, the Muslim era. And on the left, you have the graduations from the time of the pharaohs. So, when the floodwaters rose, they flowed in here and gradually filled the millimeter. The priests used these graduations to estimate the force of the flood water and the speed at which it would rise. If there was too much water, they had to build shelters. And if there was not enough water, they had to dig ponds to retain as much of it as possible. It was a vital and very important role of the king of Egypt to manage the floodwaters of the Nile and to regulate water supplies for the crops. In ancient Egypt, everything was thought to be connected to the deities. If there was a bad flood, it was because Kanum was unhappy. Kanum, with his ram's head, is one of the most important gods in the Egyptian pantheon. His name means master of the water, and he controls the Nile floods. Kanum resides on Elephantine Island, which is the focal point of his kingdom, the first cataract. The cataracts are the rocks, mostly granite, which covered this whole region back in the day. The Nile has carved out a path through them. You have to imagine this region in the season of inundation, with the water swirling between all these rocks. In ancient Egyptian mythology, this was the source of the Nile. If Kanum is the god of the Nile's floods, Happy was the god of its source. He lives on the riverbed, in a cave under the cataract. Water spurts out of a jar in his hands. Happy embodies the benevolent aspect of the Nile. He is portrayed as an androgynous figure with a bust and a belly. Happy personifies fertility. When he is with his double, he represents the link between Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt, between the papyrus and the lotus. The Nile's floodwaters no longer reach the first cataract. A few kilometers upstream from Elephantine Island, a concrete and steel monstrosity is blocking the way. 
bringing this capricious river under control. The Aswan Dam has usurped Kanum, the god of the floods. At over four kilometers long and 111 meters high, the dam is a match for the Great Pyramid, taking up 17 times more space. Since it was built in 1970, this giant structure has transformed Egypt. Today, Egyptian farmers have three harvests a year instead of just one, but there is a price to pay. Chemical fertilizers have replaced the silt from the flood waters. Nowadays, the Aswan Dam is a tourist attraction. It is a source of pride for Egyptians and for those who built it. Roshti was just 22 when he was recruited to work on this vast building site. I was here 55 years ago, so you can imagine the feelings I have now. Let you imagine the shape of the environment at that time. You see this place, actually, I mean, at that time it wasn't clean and uh, marvelous like this. It was hills and valleys of sand and rocks and all of that. I mean, this was our offices. We found ourselves in 1960, the beginning of the High Dam and the beginning of what we call it, changing the mood of the Egypt itself, actually. From a small country to a country which has the goodwill to start building something like the High Dam. That's why I, I like to talk about the High Dam. It's not because an engineering sense, but I'm talking about the uh, psychological meaning about it. In the 1960s, Nasser ruled Egypt, a fervent defender of Arab nationalism. He wanted to proclaim the independence of his country to the whole world. The Aswan Dam became his great achievement. The United States refused to fund it, so Nasser appealed to the Soviet Union and was successful. Work started in 1960. 36,000 workers toiled day and night in temperatures sometimes exceeding 55 degrees. There were numerous accidents. The official number of victims was over 500. We had a lot of sacrifices. We had a lot of people dying on this project, actually. But the conclusion in, in, the, in the end of it, actually, that we are standing there now seeing that this project is living among all of us. Abdel Karim worked on the dam and survived. He was born and bred in Aswan. At the age of 91, the dam remains the biggest adventure of his life. Long live Egypt. Long live Egypt. Long live Egypt. Now I can talk to you about the dam. When construction started, I was working on a dangerous site. Everything collapsed on top of the workers, and lots of people were killed. Work was halted, and the biggest machines were banned from the site. We had to continue by hand using shovels. It took all our strength to lift the big stones with ropes. Yes, people died, but it was for a good cause, the Aswan Dam. Oh. This is the letter that Gamal Abdul Nasser sent me once the dam was finished. It's a thank you letter. I'm proud of my contribution. I'm glad I helped build the Aswan Dam. I did it for Egypt. 